we put a per, um a possible trade out it did very well too by the way would you send Minshew to Cleveland to get Kareem Hunt and they would send Hunt and a two back somebody in Cleveland goes why would we do this well because you would have the best substitute teacher next to Nick Foles in the NFL he wouldn't cost you an arm and a leg He's a backup quarterback, and you get to Sean Watson, and maybe you could trade and send out Jacoby Brissett somewhere. Hour two, National Football Show. It's your boy, Big Sills. Bottom of the hour, Merrill Reese will join us. Can't wait to talk to the legendary voice of the Philadelphia Eagles. Again, we look forward to talking with him, and please hit the like button. Let me revisit a topic from yesterday. You think you have enough with Miles Sanders, Gainwell, and Boston as a committee to win ball games? You think that's enough to improve your offense with the same group of players? And teams are going to be game planning against your running attack. So um, you you think you can win with these guys. We put a a possible trade out. It did very well, too, by the way. Would you send Minshew to Cleveland to get Kareem Hunt and they would send Hunt and a two back? Somebody in Cleveland goes, why would we do this? Well, because you would have the best substitute teacher next to Nick Foles in the NFL. He wouldn't cost you an arm and a leg. He's a backup quarterback. And you get to Sean Watson and maybe you could trade and send out Jacoby Brissett somewhere. He's better than Jacoby Brissett, Gardner Minshew. Remember, this is about the backup quarterback in Cleveland right now. Someone goes, why would I trade for a backup quarterback? Well, you're going to start a backup quarterback. And he's not better than the backup quarterback in Philly. And there's a need at the quarterback position, and it's a higher-valued position than a running back. You know you, you know what's delusional? You should actually hear Cleveland Brown fans think that they could get a one for Kareem Hunt. Can you tell me the last running back you can remember that was traded for a one? Can you tell me a running back that could just comes to your mind that has been put on the open market and you got a first rounder in return for him? But Brown fans think, I thought the same thing, Trent Richardson. I thought the same thing, but I could have swore they were twos and threes. When they may, may, maybe you're, I think it was Trent Richardson. That's the guy. It came that came to my mind too. Okay, wasn't it like um, Cleveland to Indy, right? Something like that. Herschel Walker in the nineties. Excuse me, now it's eighties. Ricky Williams. So no one recently. But yet, Brown fans think you're getting a one, two, or three for that guy. You're out of your mind. And he's going to want a contract. This is what you do with Kareem Hunt, my opinion. You bring him in. You let him get on the open market. And he'll find out what his value is. And you could sit there and look at him and go, here's $5 million. Because I'd rather pay Kareem Hunt $5 million than that broken paper mache Miles Sanders $5 million. And I would never pay him two and a half. That's the money he makes now. He's overpaid. Miles Sanders is an overpaid player on the Eagles because he's always hurt. Yeah, but Danny's a good player. (laughs) Good player that's always hurt. That's always a good formula for success. Sure. We have the quarterback that can run. We're good. 
Why in the world would you want to continue that trend of running your quarterback like that as the number one focus? Name me one place in the National Football League where that is the number one option for a quarterback. It's not even in Baltimore. They don't want Lamar running the ball. They want him to do what he did a couple years back when he led the NFL in passing touchdowns. What is the one place that the quarterback is led by his rushing attack and not his arm? Is there a place? My point is you got to try to improve the running game. So you bring in a guy like Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt is dying on the vine in Cleveland. I don't care if he wants to play in Cleveland. He's never going to be the number one guy in Cleveland because of Chubb. He's never. That's right, Jeremiah. Philly's the only place that the number one thing that they do with their quarterback is his quarterback is the lead dog in the running attack. Can't have that. It's, it's, it's a disaster waiting to happen. So again, Gainwell and Boston, Scott, are dudes. Could somebody shake loose in the next two weeks? Yes, always happens. You see somebody that ends up being out there that comes in like a LeGarrette Blunt, or somebody that could come in and improve your running attack. Because here, I'll say this to you. Miles Sanders does not have a chokehold on that starting position. It's got to be one of the only positions on the Eagles that a player doesn't have a chokehold on it. Lane Johnson has a chokehold on that right tackle spot. Jordan Mulata has a chokehold on that spot. Jason Kelsey has a chokehold on that spot. Dickerson has a chokehold. Isaac Sayamalo, after the second week of camp, he put a chokehold on it. There's no positions to be won there at that group. AJ's got a chokehold on it. Devontae Smith's got a chokehold on it. You run it back, you don't. Dude, anybody can walk in there and win that job. That shows you how unstable that is. Still seeing, look at your safety position. Your running back in safety position, anybody off the street could come in and win a gig. Not good. We'll do just fine with Boston Scott. Just a dude. Not very good pass catchers at all. Not one back that's worth it. Gain well a little bit. Kenyon Drake, it gave him a ton of money, man, and he bombed. I don't know. Maybe Sanders is hurt because he's getting ready for a season or traded. So you put no film on tape for somebody to evaluate you. Jeff Bone, how you doing, brother? Appreciate you coming aboard. Thank you. Trade for Pollard. Cowboys ain't. You see what the Cowboys are doing with Pollard and their offense? Because they're so short short-handed at wide receiver, they're lining him up in the slot now. Tony Pollard is getting lined up in the slot in Dallas now. He's playing wide out. They're trying to get both Zeke and him on the field at the same time. That shows you the troubles that the Cowboys are in when it comes to their passing attack. Hertz has a chokehold on RB1. Isn't that crazy? Jalen Hurts has a chokehold as the number one running back in Philly, but not the quarterback spot. Because we're still talking whether or not he's coming back for the 2023 season. Tells you they'd, they'd rather have him as a running back. Hey, maybe that's an option next year. Pollard, 800 grand. What a shame. Nice and eagle. Hey, unbelievable, man. Looks like we got some roster moves here. 
The Eagles have waived tackle Jared Williams, running back DeAndre Torrey, and cornerback Josh Blackwell. Tackle guard Brett, Brett Tooth and tight end Tyree Jackson have been placed on injured reserve. That's the pup list. Okay. Not significant names there. Okay. Not significant, I don't think, because the Eagles are so deep. Oh, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Xander, I'll tell you what, though, man. Can, can I see that one more time, though, Xander? I want to show somebody something here. Okay, you see the tackle, um, Brett Tooth? They're hiding him. They're hiding him. You put him on the player unable to perform list, the pup list. I think you get an opportunity to come off like after week six, if I'm not mistaken. So you're hiding that guy. You, you must like him. Okay. Cause you just went out and out wave him. So they're, they're hiding him. They'll probably take him from the pup list to the, um, practice squad they must like the kid Xander just said McMullen likes him Keith says Sills when do you see Hurts getting benched I don't he's not getting benched this year he's not he's not getting he's not getting benched 